class i will discuss about the what is uh, payback method and uh, what is uh, uh, depreciation and what are the different uh, types of the depreciations so under that uh, are the different methods so that is under that we have seen about the straight line depreciation sum of years digits and uh, declining balance depreciation and uh, sinking fund depreciation like that and then we see about the what are the different uh, causes of the depreciation also and uh, some related problems of that uh, depreciation so in this class uh, we we'll discuss about uh, some problems about the depreciation and uh, what is the tax depreciation and what is the net present value depreciation re related to that uh, we, we see about the some problems so in this the uh declining already we discuss about the declining method under this declining method we see about the one depreciation uh, one problem so under that a mining company purchased a coal mine on january 1st uh, 1st january for 28 lakhs the estimated capacity of the mine is 17 lakhs 50000 tons of coal and the estimated slavage value is zero the company incurred additional rupees 50000 and developed of mine for extraction purpose and they had extracted 21 lakhs uh, tons of coal from the mine up to january 31st and sold all but 13000 tons of the coal extracted from the mine within january calculate the depreciation expenses of the mine for the month ending in january 31st so for this so what is the formula for this depreciation expenses is equal to cost minus slavage value into number of units extracted by estimated number of units so depreciation expense is equal to cost minus slavage value into number of units extracted by estimated number of units so cost pattern is 28 lakhs that is a plus 50000 by 17 lakhs 50000 that is equal to rupees 1.62857 so total depreciation mine is, is cost per ton into total units that is how much you get for the cost per ton into how total units extracted then you get 3 lakhs 42000 3 lakhs 42000 so depreciation expenses is equal to total depletion of mine minus depreciation related to unsold extracted so that is how much 3 lakhs 42000 minus what is the cost per ton uh, that is uh, 162857 into what is the depreciation related unsold 14000 that we get 34200 minus 22800 is equal to 3 lakhs 19200 this is the expenses what how much of the expenses will be there that is the uh, how what they give depreciation expense of the mine for the month end of the january 30 so how much expenses it will be 3 lakhs 19200 next one calculate the depreciation rate using straight line and sum of years digit for the data given below so for this the given slavage value is zero life of equipment is uh, n equal to 5 years initial expenditure is 1 lakh 50000 for declining balance method using 200 person so if they have the uh, problem uh, data given to the depreciation rate for that you have to find out the depreciation rate for the straight line method and sum of years value so what is the formula for straight line d is equal to p minus l by n p minus l by n so what is the 
P value they give us. So total declining, total initial expended is one lakh fifty thousand minus L. So L is what is average value that is equal to zero. And what is the N? So a number of years they given will be five years. So that is equal to thou thirty thousand per year. Under that we have to calculate in terms of the straight line method. You have to calculate. Right line method D is equal to P minus L by N, so we get the value is thirty thousand per year. Thirty thousand per year. Next, under the sum of year digit method, how you calculate what is the formula? N is equal to N into N plus one by two. So N is five years, and five plus one by two, then N is equal to fifteen. N is equal to fifteen. So when you have to find out the different years, so D one is equal to N by small N by capital N into P. So small N is how much? It will be five years, and capital is fifteen into total will be how much? It will be fifteen. Uh, Uh, one lakh fifty thousand. That is equal to fifty thousand. And the next year it will be n minus one into n by n into p. That is equal to forty thousand. And the next year it is n minus two by n into p. That is equal to thirty thousand. And the next year it is n minus three into by n into p. That is equal to twenty thousand. And the next year n minus four uh, into n minus four in By n into p, that is equal to ten thousand. Next one, uh, numerical problem. Next one is the equipment in a power station. It will cost is fifty lakh sixteen thousand and has a slavage value is sixty thousand at the end of twenty five years. Determine the depreciation value of equipment. At the end of twenty years, by the following, at the end of twenty years, you have to find out the depreciation value. By the what are the different methods they have taken? We have taken straight line method, dimensing value method, and the sinking fund method at five percent compounded value. So, what is the formula for straight line method? So. Uh, P uh, total uh, profit uh, total investment is fifteen lakh sixty thousand and the slavage value is sixty thousand and they taken the number of years will be twenty five and then equal to two. So to under the straight line method, so annual depreciation is n is equal to P minus S by n. So P is fifteen lakh sixty thousand minus sixty thousand by n is twenty five. We get sixty. Thousand and depreciation value at the end of twenty years they have asked so P minus annual depreciation into twenty so fifteen lakh sixty thousand minus twenty into sixty thousand then you get the value is three lakh sixty thousand three lakh sixty thousand this is for the method of the straight line method. Next one, you discuss about the dimensioning value method. So under the dimensioning value method, what is the formula? Is d minus one by d is equal to one minus l by p into one by n. So that is equal to here l and s equal to slavage value. So one minus sixty thousand by one fifty fifty lakh sixty thousand into one by Twenty-five. That is equal to zero point one two two. Zero point one two two. So when you get the depreciation after twenty years, is p into one minus d into n. So we get fifty lakh sixty thousand into one minus zero point one two two into twenty. We get one lakh. Fifteen thousand six fifteen rupees. One lakh fifteen thousand six fifteen rupees. When you get this method by dimensioning value method, dimensioning value method. Next one it is sinking fund method. Sinking fund method. So under the sinking fund method, rate of interest is five percent. So sinking fund is equal to Q equal to P minus L into R by one plus R into N minus one. 
So P is total investment fifty lakh sixty thousand by slab is minus sixty thousand into zero point percentage is zero point zero five by one plus zero point zero five into twenty five minus one. So we get the sinking fund Q is thirty one thousand four hundred and thirty three rupees. Thirty one thousand four hundred and thirty three. So here. In this problem, we solve it in the form of the straight line method and uh, sinking method and depreciation value method. So, in the next one, that is sinking fund. Uh, they have last thing they have asked sinking fund after thirty years. So, P plus P into one plus R into N minus one by R. US CA minus time value money calculation. Then it is ten lakh thirty nine thousand three sixty two. So the value of the plant after twenty years. What is the value of the plant? So for the, in the for we we taken the investment. It is the fifty lakhs sixty thousand. At the value of what are the plant cost after twenty years means fifteen lakhs total will be the investment is fifty lakhs sixty thousand minus so sinking fund after twenty years will be ten lakhs thirty nine thousand three sixty two so we get after ten years what is the value of that plant is five lakhs twenty thousand six thirty eight five lakhs twenty thousand six thirty eight next the another problem is a transformer Costing rupees ninety thousand has an useful life of twenty years. Determine the annual depreciation charge using straight line method. We have to find in the straight line method. Assuming salvage value of the equipment is rupees ten thousand, so P is ninety thousand, and yes, they have given is ten thousand, and the number of years here is twenty years. Find out the depreciation value charge using. Straight line. So, what is the formula? So, annual depreciation charge is equal to P minus S by N. So, ninety thousand minus ten thousand by twenty. That is equal to four thousand. So, annually, what is the depreciation charge? It will be four thousand rupees. And the next problem that is a distribution transformer cost. A dip distribution transformer cost is two lakhs. And has a useful life of twenty years. It has a life of twenty years. If the slabage value is ah uh, ten uh, thousand, and the rate of annual compound interest is eight percent, calculate the amount to be saved annually for replacement of transformer after the end of twenty years by sinking fund method. So, what much of the amount to be saved annually? For replacement, when you have to replace the transformer after the end of the twenty years by sinking fund method, so P equal to two lakh and N is equal to twenty years. So S is the same as ten percent and the percentage will be eight percent. So Q is equal to sinking method P minus S R by one plus R into N minus one. So it will be the annual cost of this is. Four four thousand one fifty three rupees. Four thousand one fifty three rupees. Next one, we have accumulated rupees five thousand in credit card debit. The credit card company charges eighty percent nominal annual interest compounded monthly. You can offer to pay only rupees hundred per month. They have offered to rupees hundred per month. How many months will it take to pay off debit? How many months it will be take? So, P is five thousand and A and R is hundred and R is zero point one eight and C is equal to twelve and in how much years it will be take? So P by A is equal to one plus I by C into C n minus one by I by C into one plus I by C to C n. So for finding the n, n is ninety six months or eight years. It takes to clear that the debit card period will be when you have to pay hundred per month. It takes the period will be ninety six months or eight years or eight years. 
next one we discuss about the what is tax and tax credit what is tax and tax credit generally uh, most income tax systems allow say uh, tax deductions for uh, for recovery of the cost of assets used in a business or for the production of income so such deductions are allowed for individuals and companies where uh, the assets are consumed currently the cost may be deducted currently as an expenses and uh, as it treated as a part of cost of uh, goods sold like that so these cost of uh, assets not currently consumed must be deferred and recovered over time uh, such as through depreciation so um some systems full deductions of the cost at least in the year of assets are occurred so rules what are the rules must be there these rules will be vary by country and may vary within a country based on the type of asset or a type of a tax payer that means so whatever the systems allow the tax deduction for recovery of the cost of assets used in a business or for a production of the income so tax means a compulsory contribution to state revenue levied by the government on workers income and business profits or added to the cost of some goods services and transactions is termed as tax so it is a revenue levied by the government on workers income and business profits and added to the cost of some goods services and transactions is termed as a tax so a fee charged by a government on a product income or activity it is a one type of the fee which will be charged so we have take salary when you have take salary we have pay the income tax must be there so for any goods or for any industries whatever they may they have to pay some tax municipal tax like that there are different tax must be there. so a fee charged by a government on a product income or activity is nothing but the tax there are basically two types of tax one is direct tax and another one is indirect tax also what is direct tax and what is indirect a tax levied directly on personal or corporate income then it is called direct cast a, a tax which is you directly on personal or corporate income is nothing but the direct tax a tax is levied on the price of a good or service then it is called indirect so when it will be priced for a goods or a service then it is called indirect a tax will be directly for a personal then it is called direct tax when it will be priced for a good then it is called as indirect tax indirect tax so a tax is a financial charge a tax is a financial charge so tax uh, imposed upon a tax payer by state or the functional equivalent of a state to fund various public expenditures various public expenditures so a failure to pay is usually punishable by law whenever they have to pay they are not pay about the tax they have punishable by law so taxes are also imposed by by any administrative divisions for every divisions we have the tax so it is a financial charge so whenever you have to pay fail to pay this tax then it will be punishable by law so the purpose of taxation is finance and government expenditure to finance to expenditure of the government so the uh, what is the main purpose of this taxation is to finance government expenditure one of the most important use of this tax is to finance public goods and services such as street lighting and street cleaning street lighting and street cleaning so uh, these tax deduction expenses such as maintenance energy operating cost insurance and property tax reduce the income subjects of tax so as tax is equal to 1 minus i into e plus i into d so equation for finding tax saving here as means 
yearly annual of the tax saving e means yearly annual energy saving and d is annual depreciation rate and i is income tax so yearly annual of the tax saving and yearly annual uh, energy saving and annual depreciation rate and income tax this is the formula for the equation for finding the tax saving so a tax credit is a tax incentive which allows credit tax payers to subtract the amount of the credit for the total they liable the state so these tax credits encourages the capital investment this will be encourages the capital investments it will be encourage behaviors like investment and these tax Uh, tax credit lowers the income tax and increases the investment merit and increases the investment merit so this tax credit uh, directly reduces the tax bills unlike tax deductions and tax expectation exemptions which direct indirectly reduce tax bills by reducing the size of the basis so most tax uh, some of uh, when you have to uh, take in the salaries in the point of view, you have to uh, use using some savings like that also it will be reducing the cost so most tax credits are non refundable tax credits meaning that they cannot uh, only can only be used to the point at which no more taxes are owed if there are refundable tax credits means the credits exceeds the amount of tax won the excess is given as tax payer so it is non refundable tax credits and refundable non refundable means if they can be used to the point at which no more taxes must be there refundable means if it will be the whatever the tax will be paid it will be exceeds the amount of tax then it will be called as refundable tax credits this is about the tax so tax means most income tax systems allows a tax uh, deduction for recovery of the cost of assets assets used in a business or for the production of income next one is net present value next one is net present value net present value means the difference between the market value of a pro projects and its cost project and its cost the difference between the market value of a project and its cost so how much value is credited for undertaking an is the first step is to estimate the expected future cash flows the second step is to estimate the required return for projects of this risk value and the third step is to find the present value of cash flows and subtract the initial investment so it is a difference of the market value of a project and it cost so you have to find the present value of the cash flows and to subtract the initial investments so if if the net present value is positive accept the project if it will be the positive and it will be the negative whatever they may it will be the positive you have to accept the project a positive net present value means the project is expected to add value to the firm and will therefore increase the wealth of the owners since our goal is increasing owner wealth net present value is a direct measure how well the how well this project will meet our goal how well whatever you have to take in the project it will be reaches our goal or not then only we have accept this project that means net present value means difference between the present value of cash inflows and the present value of cash outflows that occur as a result of undertaking an investment it is the basic means it is the difference between the net present inflow and the present uh, value of the cash outflow so it may be a positive or zero or negative so this positive net present value means the present value of a cash inflow is greater than the present value of cash flow then it will be considered as net present value will be positive
so the investment proposal to consider will be acceptable if the inflow is greater than the present value of outflow whatever we have to the investment it will be greater than the uh, the uh, investment inflow whatever inflow that means investment is greater then the present value of the cash outflow then we have to take in as a positive net present value zero if the present value of cash flow is equal to the present value of inflow is equal to the present value of outflow uh, outflow the net present value is said to be zero and the investment is proposed is considered to be acceptable negative if the present value of cash inflow is less then present value of cash outflow is is less compared to the outflow then the net net present value is said to be negative and the investment proposal will be rejected so if it will be positive means net uh, inflow is greater than the outflow then it is positive we have to accept if it will be the equal zero inflow is equal to outflow then only it will be zero so it will be considered to be acceptable but npv negative means if inflow is less than the outflow then the it will be negative and the investment will be rejected proposal will be rejected that means present value of cash flow is greater than present value of cash outflow then it is positive and the project is acceptable present value of cash flow is equal to the present value of cash outflow then it will be zero and the project is acceptable if present value of cash inflow is less than the present value of cash outflow then it will be negative and project is not acceptable it is about the net present value for this net present value we see some problems so a management of fine electronic company is considered to purchase an equipment to be attached and main manufacturing machine the equipment will cost 6000 and will be increase annual cash inflow by 2 2200 rupees the value of life of the equipment is 6 years after 6 years it will have no savage value the management wants to to 20% return on all investment compute net present value of the investment present so initial cost is 6 6000 uh, rupees uh life of the project 6 years annual cash inflow to, uh, to 2200 savage value zero required rate will be 20% so item years amount of cash flow 20% factor present value of cash inflow so annual cash flow 1 to 6 years is how much 2200 so 20% of factor means 3 Three three point three twenty six. So that is present value of the cash flow is seven thousand three seventeen. And the initial investment now uh, now it will be amount of cash flow is six thousand. So one thousand rupees twenty percent factory. So we get six thousand. So net present value is one thousand three hundred and seventeen rupees. One thousand three hundred and seventeen rupees. so next cost reduction project this is cost inflow project and then it is cost reduction project smart manufacturing company is planning to reduce its labor cost by automating a critical task that is currently performed manually the automation required the installation of a new machine the cost to purchase and install a new machine is 15000 rupees the installation of machine can reduce annual labor cost by 4200 the life of the machine is 15 years the slavage value of the machine after 15 years will be zero the required rate of uh, return of smart manufacturing company is 25% should smart manufacturing company purchase the machine so Initial cost is fifty thousand. 
and life of the project is 15 years annual cost savage is 4200 slavage is zero and required rate of the return is 24 percent so item and the annual cost saving 1 to 15 years it is 4200 and 3.85 to 25 percent factor so we get 16 present flow is 16 to not 8 in initial investment is now 15,000 so 1000 rupees percentage factor so 15,000 so we get 10208 rupees net present value so according to the net present value smart manufacturing company should purchase the machine because the present value of cost saving is greater than the present value of initial cost to purchase and install the machine so we have to take this uh, uh, should be purchased so next one is the next net present value method uneven cash flow when it will be uneven cash flows so notice that the projects in the above example generate equal cash flow in all the periods such a flow is uh, even cash flow but sometimes project do not generate e even cash inflows in all periods. When it does not even in the cash inflow in the all periods, when project generate different cash inflows in different periods, the flow of cash is called as uneven cash inflow. So we take a simple example. A project requires an initial investment is uh, 2,25,000 and in expected to have generated the following net cash inflows for first year 95,000, second year 18,000, third year 64,000, fourth year 55,000. So there are different inflows must be there. So compute the net present value of the project if the minimum desired rate is returned to 12%. So for that how you have to find out. So the cash inflow generated by the project is uneven. Therefore the present value will be computed for each yearly separately. So present value of 4 years we have taken. Present value at 12% is 0 0.893, 0 0.797, 0 0.712 and 0 0.637. So cash flow is 90% under that this 12% and second year 80, third year 60, fourth year 55. So present value of cash flow is 84,835 in first year and second year 63,760 and third year 42,720 and final year fourth year 34,980. So total initial cost is 2,26,295. So initial investment is 2,25,000. So we get the value is 2,22,000. So net present value is 102,95. This is about the what is net present value and what is the uh, even uh, flow and the uh, R flow. So uh, in this class we discuss about the some problems about the different depreciation and what is tax depreciation and what is net present value. Thank you.